Hi there. Thanks for having me tonight as part of the Delaware River Festival. My name is Jennifer from the Free Library of Philadelphia, and I'm really excited to be part of the program tonight. I'm going to be sharing a book with you called River by Alicia Cooper. River, Alicia Cooper. This book is published by Orchard Books, an imprint of Scholastic, and shared with their permission. Morning, a mountain lake, a traveler, a canoe. As she paddles out into the blustery middle of the lake, she turns for a last wave to the shore behind her. Her journey begins. She is alone, far from home, Gray clouds bump into the mountains above her. A hard wind blows down through the treetops. 300 miles stretch in front of her. A faraway destination, a wild plan, and the question, can she do this? She takes a deep breath and pulls her paddles through the cold water. The canoe cuts across the lake to the headwaters of the river. She enters the river. Cedar trees touch overhead, making a green tunnel. The river is shallow here, scraping the canoe's underside. She reaches into the water for a pebble and places it in her canoe. Also in her canoe, tent, sleeping bag, guidebook, map, life jacket, first aid kit, waterproof duffel with food, Clothes, water bottles, coffee pot, stove, lamp, book, pencils, a sketchbook. Sometimes the river is so shallow she has to get out and walk, pulling the canoe with a rope like she's leading a horse. Then the water deepens past mossy brown rocks. As she approaches one rock, the rock rises up out of the river, water rippling off its back. A moose! A moose watches her. She watches the moose. The forest is silent, but for the thump of her heart and the flip, flip of the moose's ears. She floats past, keeps paddling. Around the next bend, she hears thunder. The thunder grows louder and the river rushes into a gorge. Stone shelves squeezing the river tight, pushing the canoe faster and faster until the thunder is on top of her. Rapids! She braces her knee against the canoe's ribs and cinches her life jacket. The river turns white and roars, drops, jumps, leaps from pool to pool, bashes the canoe against underwater boulders. She digs her paddle into the spray. Her hat flies off, gone. Her stomach flips. And for a moment, she fears the rapids will flip them over. But the canoe rights itself, and the river spits them out down into the next rapids below. The thunder fades with a sigh. She comes to shore. After checking to make sure the canoe is okay, she changes into long underwear and warm socks. Hangs her bedraggled clothes to dry, sets up her tent, Heats a bowl of soup and eats peanut butter straight from the jar, using a chocolate bar as a spoon. Hands blistered, body sore, she writes in her sketchbook by the glow of the lamp. Above her, stars come out in the blue-black sky. The moon climbs up among the stars. She is alone, but not. The river stays beside her mumbling to her and to itself all through the night. Dawn comes early, cold and sharp. She brews coffee, then breaks camp and heads down river, sliding under an iron bridge. Rusted pickup trucks rattle above her. A driver waves and she waves back. The river winds through the forest. New life appears around each bend. Otters, ducks, dragonflies, the kingfisher. As she sketches, she wonders what word would best describe each animal. Eager otter? 
she sees a blackberry bush, so she comes to shore and is picking berries when she hears rustling. Uh, a bear cub. She stops, backs away real slow, and floats off in the canoe. When she camps, she plucks a flower and presses it between the pages in her sketchbook. She eats cheese and crackers. A full day, she thinks. In the morning, she paddles until she comes to a stone bridge and a sign. Danger! A dam. The river stops. She must portage around the dam. She takes two trips, first with her gear, then with the canoe. She staggers, the canoe balancing on her shoulders. Down the steep gravel path next to the dam, she trips, <gasps> drops the canoe. Grimacing, she checks the canoe and her bloody knee, then loads up and keeps paddling. Creeks feed the river and the river widens. Cows graze in pastures at the river's side, raising their heads to watch her go. She moves at the cows. One moves back. The land hums with tractors. The air smells of cut hay. Black flies circle her head and bite her ankles. In the evening, she swims in the river and washes the day away. Treats her bruised knees, falls asleep fast. The next morning, she paddles downriver until she stopped again. A waterfall. There is no way over the waterfall, but there is a way around it. A lock. Locks descend the river here like a staircase, allowing boats to navigate up and down the river. Fishing boats and work boats wait to enter the lock. She paddles into line. The brawny man opening the lock bellows, hello. The operator turns a lever in his control shanty. The top gate of the lock groans open. She slides into the chamber. The operator turns another lever. Water drains out of the chamber. As the water level lowers, she holds a rope to steady the canoe. Then the far gate opens, the operator bellows, goodbye, and she is loosed downriver. Onward. The sun hammers down and she paddles the flattened river. Sweat beads the back of her neck. The country shifts from farms with faded barns to villages with white clapboard houses to chimneyed factories on the outskirts of a town. At the levee, she hauls up the canoe. Two boys with fishing rods watch from above. Where are you going? Asks the older boy. The younger boy stares wide-eyed when she tells them. It feels funny to talk. She asks them to look after her canoe and walks the street of the old town. It feels funny to walk. At a grocery, she buys snacks, supplies, postcards, a hat, at the levee, she gives the boys the snacks. The boys wish her luck. Back in the canoe, the river feels familiar beneath her. She paddles away from town and camps that night on an island, alone again. In the morning, where is the river? It was here last night. The river has been taken away by the fog. Thick, wet. So she reads in her tent and explores the island. High in the branches of a tree, she sees a bramble nest, and down on the rocky shore, an eagle with a fish in its talons. Striped bass, maybe? Sturgeon? She opens her guidebook, then her sketchbook. All is quiet, but for the shh, shh, shh of pencil on paper. There is nothing in the world but her, the bird, this place, no one knows where she is. Then the eagle takes flight, its wings thumping the air. The morning lifts the fog away and she points the nose of her canoe down river. Clouds roll over mountains and the river runs through the mountains between earth and sun. The river is broad here. She hugs the shore, the land passes by, mile after mile, 
as she guides the canoes south past apple orchards, hilltop houses, and industrial plants. She paddles the day and camps in the evenings. Her blisters have hardened into calluses. Her sunburn turned dark, pencils whittled down, sketchbook filling up. The days blend together, paddling, sketching, eating, camping, paddling again. At night when she sleeps, she dreams she is paddling under a big cloud sky. The river snakes through craggy hills. Rock faces loom above her and plunge down into deep water. She paddles with eyes narrowed on the lookout. Under a shadowy bridge around bell ringing buoys, next to railroad tracks and a clattering freight train. When the current is too swift or the wind too strong, she comes to shore and waits, writes postcards, checks her map, once the conditions turn, she keeps going and is paddling around a, around a stony promontory when she senses a rumbling coming from the other side, and it is heading right towards her. <gasps> a tugboat barreling up river, plowing up a wake of water. She hollers, but nobody on board sees her. She acts fast, turning the canoe's bow into the wake even as water crashes over the gunwale. <sighs> that was close, she thinks. She hides, hides, the, she lands, hides the canoe among a pile of rocks, walks up the main street of a village, mails her postcards, buys a cookie at a packed bakery, then back to the river. As she heads out, she feels a drop of rain. Then, Another a smattering of raindrops, then a drum roll, then a single sheet blowing sideways, a squall, swallowing her and the canoe and pushing them towards cliffs on the opposite side before capsizing them, dumping her into the raging water. She holds tight to the overturned canoe and teeth clenched, legs kicking, drags it to a rocky beach. Oh, shivering, she takes stock. Tent, gone. Clothes, soaked. Sketchbook, safe. She huddles under a roof of trees as lightning dances above her. Night falls, but she sleeps little. No one knows where she is. Dawn comes at last. She stretches at the water's edge and finds a piece of driftwood shaped like a fish. As she paddles down river, her body warms. Then she rounds a bluff and there's a steel suspension bridge with arcing, arcing cables. And on the other side of the bridge, the city. She slips into the city unseen, almost unseen. A lone gull hovers above the bow of the canoe, riding the wind and watching her over its shoulder before catching a gust and rising up, up, up into the air, higher and higher, until a canoe is a small dot on the gray-blue river, one moving part in the wide world below. Glass mountains of skyscrapers, Brick forests of buildings, gorges of streets leading down to the river, and crisscrossing the river boats, scudding ferries, tacking sailboats, dueling jet skis, speeding police boats, fire boats, tour boats, tugboats, shoving barges. She paddles the length of the city and listens. Growl of traffic. Blare of horns, rattle of subway cars over a bridge, a chorus. The sounds bounce off the buildings and over ship masts and down to her. The city, old and new. She feels like an explorer. But there is someone here she knows, someone she needs to see. She paddles through the harbor to the boatyard. 
black hauled boats and brick warehouses crowd the wharves. The air smells of diesel fuel and dirt. Standing in front of one warehouse, beaming out at her, is a bearded man in overalls, the builder of her canoe. How did you do? He calls down, nodding at his handiwork. They haul the canoe to the wharf and run their hands down its sides. They share a coffee. The builder gives her a small wrapped package. Then she launches the canoe one more time, past cranes lifting and lowering freight, out across the harbor. Through the harbor and under a last bridge, the river stretches behind her. In front, the ocean. A hard wind blows and a white clouds race overhead. The ocean is big and wild, but she is strong and she knows what she's doing. She feeds the weather and keeps the canoe steady and over the water, she makes her way. As she nears the end of her journey, she looks to the horizon and imagines the rest of the world. And a part of her wants to keep going. Another adventure, another day. But closer in, she sees the lighthouse and she knows it's time for her to be home. A seal pops its head out of the water and watches her go. Whales must be around here too. And there's the lighthouse rising and falling in the evening light, growing larger by the minute. As she paddles, her mind plays forward. She can't wait to be with them again. Can't wait to tell them about the moose and eagles, rapids and storms, and then to turn her sketches into paintings and her words into a story. Now she sees them, her family, her children waving, her dog racing down the sand. So she paddles harder, as hard as she can, and brings the canoe to shore. The end. Um, that's it for our storybook. Thank you so much for having me. I hope that you enjoyed our story and that you will be tuning in to lots of other good things, fun activities, and other things that they have going on as part of the Delaware River Festival. Thank you. Good night.